As we turn now to another 9-11 milestone, this week marks the 40th anniversary of the Attica Rebellion. Forty years ago, September 9, 1971, prisoners took over much of Attica Prison in upstate New York to protest the prison conditions. Four days later, on the morning of September 13th, Governor Nelson Rockefeller ordered state troopers to storm the prison. Troopers shot indiscriminately over 2,000 rounds of ammunition. 39 men would die, prisoners and guards. After the shooting stopped, police beat and tortured scores more prisoners. Ninety of the surviving prisoners were seriously wounded, but were initially denied medical care. After a quarter century of legal struggles, the state of New York would eventually award the surviving prisoners of Attica $12 million in damages. Well, this past Friday night, close to 3,000 people gathered at Riverside Church in New York to remember Attica. Among them, Cornell West, professor of religion and African-American studies at Princeton University and author of numerous books. He talked about 40 years ago and today. I want to begin by thanking Brother Phelps, Reverend Phelps, for this space in this prophetic church. I want to begin by thanking Sister Sarah Consular for her vision of bringing us together. But we shall never forget our dear brother William Consular, his love, his courage, his vision, his sacrifice. And any time I get a chance to set my eyes on the artistic genius and literary jazz man, Amiri Baraka, it just extends years to my life. Blessing to have you here. And for the brothers who spoke so eloquently, whose voices consecrated this evening, resilience, resistance, and when I saw you take the picture together, I could see Matt Turner and John Brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I could see the workers moving in the 1890s. I could see the brothers and sisters on the corner watch 1965 in Detroit, the 67 in Newark, and 67 in 212 rebellions the night Brother Martin Luther King was shot down like a dog one year after he gave his Beyond Vietnam speech to bring poor people together, bring a critique to bear on the viciousness of American imperialism. That's what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about here. So 40, 40 years later, we come back to commemorate this struggle against the historical backdrop of a people who have been so terrorized and traumatized and stigmatized that we have been taught to be scared, intimidated, always afraid, distrustful of one another and disrespectful of one another. But the Atticus Rebellion was a counter move in that direction. I call it the niggerization of a people, not just black people, because America been niggerized since 9-11. When you niggerize, you're unsafe, unprotected, subject to random violence, hated for who you are, you become so scared that you defer to the powers that be and you're willing to consent to your own domination. And that's the history of black people in America. That's the history of black people in America. Anytime you look the tear in the face and you deal with the trauma, even if maybe all you could do is sing a song and let us never forget the summer of 1971, the number one album in America was What's Going On by a genius named Marvin Gaye. What's going on? Who really cares? Save the babies. What's happening, brother? And Donnie Hathaway was in on the sideline. And so was Nina Simone. And so was Gil Scott Heron. And so was Farrell Sanders and Miles Davis and others. You had a whole context in which you can look the terror and trauma and stigma in the face and say, we're going to stand the way Sly Stone said, stand that same years in his hour. That's what we're talking about. And we live now in revolutionary times, but the counter revolution is winning. The counter-revolution is winning. The greedy oligarchs and plutocrats are winning. One out of four corporations don't pay taxes. Been gobbling up billions of dollars. And yet, not just 21% of our children living in poverty of all colors, each one precious, 42% of America's children live in poverty or near poverty. That is sick. It's a moral obscenity, it's a national disgrace, and yet, 
We have a political class, no matter what color they are, that won't say a mumbling word about that poverty. Why? Because it sits outside of the give and fro between a right-wing, mean-spirited Republican Party run by the oligarchs and the plutocrats and a spineless Democratic Party that's got ties to the oligarchs and plutocrats and the poor people get left out. They get invisible, disposable. And yet we see the same brothers in the 1950s and 60s who were coming out of socially neglected and economically abandoned spaces called the ghetto by Donny Hathaway. By Donny Hathaway, when he said ghetto, that wasn't disgraced, that wasn't demeaning. If you from the ghetto, the way he talked about it, you straightened your back up. You got your mind together. You had love in your heart for your brother and sister on the block. And it started on the chocolate side of town, but it spilled over to the vanilla side and the red side and the yellow side and the brown side too. The unity that we had in Attica among the black and brown. And I saw some white brothers too. Oh yes. And that's elementary. You got to have the unity, but you got to be honest about the powers that be dividing and conquering. And this revolutionary moment where the counter-revolution is winning, I'm going to look at brother, the group of brother, I've been so inspired by you for 25 years. Because you've been talking the same thing I'm talking about right now. Same language here in Africa. We had a good time in Ghana together. Oh, yes, we did. But now it's coming back. It's coming back. And the young people are hungry and thirsty, but the young people are thirsty for truth. Oh, yes, they're hungry for truth. And the problem is that most of our leaders have either sold out, caved in, gave up. They don't want to tell people the truth. They're too concerned about their careers. They're too concerned about success. They're too concerned about just winning the next election for their status. The 1971, the Attica brothers told the truth, but they weren't the only ones. You had a whole cacophony of voices telling the truth. But who wants to tell the truth? The condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. If you don't talk about poverty, you're not telling the truth. If you're not talking about working people being pushed against the wall with corporate profits high, you're not telling the truth. If you're not talking about the criminal activity on Wall Street and not one person going to jail yet, you're not telling the truth. Don't tell me about the crime on the block with brothers and sisters in Jamal and Letitia out taking the jail and yet gangsters who are engaged in fraudulent activity, insider trading, market manipulation, walk around having tea at night. That's what we need, but the sad thing is, and I'm going to end on this, the sad thing is the kind of courage that these brothers had in 1971 is in short supply. It's in short supply. Because when you bring together the national security state and the military industrial complex, when you bring together the prison industrial complex and all the profits that flow from it, when you bring together a corporate media multiplex that don't want to allow for serious dialogue, unless we got Sister Amy or Brother Tavis and some others. And then when you bring together the Wall Street oligarchs and the Pluto Pluto, the corporate plutocrats, and they tell any person or any group if you speak the truth we'll shoot you down like a dog and dehumanize you the way we you tend to dehumanize the brothers in Attica the only thing that will keep you going is you better have some love in your heart for the people that's the only thing that will keep you going the only reason why the long distance runner the Google the only reason why Barack is a long distance runner I don't care if you agree with them ideologically or not. It doesn't make any difference. They got enough love for the people in their heart to still tell the truth about poverty, about suffering, about struggle, and be able to look, not just presidents, because by presidents you're just talking about the placeholder of the oligarchs and the plutocrats. I don't care what color they are. To tell that truth. And most people, they, they, they hold off on that. They say, no, I got one life, one life. I, I, I saw what they did. I said, they don't. We gonna have a new wave. We gonna have a new wave of truth telling. We gonna have a new wave of witness bearing. 
and we're going to teach the younger generations that these brothers didn't struggle in vain, just like John Brown and that term.